All right. Hello there. Um, so this week's topic, we're going to be focusing on excuse me, photosynthesis. And then next week, we're going to be looking at cellular respiration. So hopefully, you know, you have some kind of knowledge as to what photosynthesis and cellular respiration are. Um, I find it a lot of times that students kind of know what is happening, but they really didn't understand the whole process of photosynthesis or cellular respiration. Um, or that, you know, you knew these things were kind of happening, but you didn't know that it was called photosynthesis, things like that. Okay, so we're gonna go through these notes. Um, <clears throat> you're gonna have to learn the chemical reactions. And honestly, these two, um, Topics over the next two weeks are going to be more of like a chemistry based lesson um, because of the reaction. So we're going to be, you know, looking at different numbers and letters, just like you kind of did in environmental science. Um, so if you have any questions or things seem confusing, make sure you reach out. I try to make this as simple as possible. Um, however, typically I draw this huge diagram on the board, which is really easy for you to understand. So I tried to incorporate that in your notes and hopefully, um, you know, you will be able to see that as you go through it. Um, so attached to your Google classroom is the fill in the blank notes that we would typically do in class. Okay. So you feel free to fill them in if you want. Um, if you do not want to fill them in and you just want to take handwritten notes, that is perfectly fine as well. However, I highly, highly, highly suggest you write something down because you're going to need this information on a quiz in two weeks. So the week of, um, I think it's like the 12th, you'll be taking a quiz on photosynthesis and cellular respiration. Okay. So make sure you write down some notes, pause this video whenever you need to, um, and reach out if you have any questions. All right. Okay, so the first thing that we talk about is the difference between an autotroph and a heterotroph. Hide this. Okay, so an autotroph is an organism that's gonna be able to make their own food. So in order for them to make their own food, they take that light energy, and that light energy is coming from the only light source available to them, which would be the sun, and they convert it to a chemical energy. So what does that mean? That means they're taking the energy that is from the sun and they're basically making it plant food, okay? The chemical energy is gonna be the plant food that they need, okay, in order to survive. So any organisms that make their own food, okay, are gonna be called autotrophs. And typically, what you will notice is that they are always green in color, okay? So majority of plants, algae, different bacterias, they are all going to make their own food. The reason that they are green, okay, and hopefully you remember this, is because of one of the organelles that we talked about in the beginning of the school year, and the organelle that... Um, you know, has an influence on this would be the chloroplast. So, you know, the process of photosynthesis or making food is going to be happening in the chloroplast. Okay, a heterotroph is an organism that cannot make their own food, okay? So while us as humans make our own food, right? You make something for dinner. You are not doing that internally, okay? You are relying on the chicken that you eat, okay? Or the different vegetables that you eat. So you as a human, while you make your own food, you are not actually making it internally. So you are considered a heterotroph. So if you need to hunt or rely on a different organism, for your food, then you are considered a heterotroph. All right, so the process of photosynthesis. Photosynthesis is gonna involve different chemical reactions, and as I said before, that converts sunlight into a usable energy. And what is that usable energy? Well, I always refer to it as plant food, okay? And what we're 
often going to refer to it is as glucose. Okay, so it is a sugar um, that plants are using. When we talk about photosynthesis, we consider it a biochemical pathway. Okay, and what a biochemical pathway means is that the products or what you get out of it become the reactants or what you put into a different chemical reaction. Okay, and we'll explain that and I'll show you a little chart in a few minutes. Okay, so as I said, a biochemical pathway is a complex series um, of chemical reactions in which the product, oops, excuse me, uh, product of one reaction is used, okay, in the next reaction. So it says photosynthesis, reactants and products. Okay, a reactant is what you need in order for the reaction to occur, right? So say, you know, you have a big sports game coming up, right? One thing you might do ahead of time is eat, okay? You are putting that into your body in order for your body to give you energy, so that would be the reactant, okay? The Whatever you're consuming is the reactant. So what do plants need or what does photosynthesis need in order to happen? Well, plants are going to need water, right? And we talked about this before um, when we talked about hypotonic, isotonic, and hypertonic, right? They need a lot of water to keep them standing up tall. And if they are do not get enough water, you'll notice that they start to droop over. Um, plants need sunlight. And then plants are actually taking in that carbon dioxide that we are breathing out. Okay, so that's why it's very important that we're not getting rid of too many trees. Okay, and if you've ever seen the Lorax, right, he um, speaks for the trees because the trees do a very important job on Earth. They're taking in that carbon dioxide or whatever goes through photosynthesis is taking in that carbon dioxide and they're making oxygen for us to breathe. So then what do plants get out of completing photosynthesis? So in order for photosynthesis to occur, right, they needed sunlight, water, and carbon dioxide. And the products, okay, are going to be oxygen, right? The tree makes oxygen for us to breathe. But what's the purpose of plants? What do plants get out of this? Well, plants get out of this food. Okay, the food is called glucose, and glucose is a six carbon sugar. So whenever you see glucose in a formula, okay, it is C6H12O6. Okay, you should be able to use those two interchangeably. Glucose means C6H12O6. Okay, ignore that the little subscripts are crossed out, they shouldn't be. Okay, but you should know that that is what this chemical formula stands for. And then as I said, what do we get from plants? Well, we get oxygen, right? And that's really important because if we did get oxygen, or excuse me, if we did not get oxygen, then we probably would not be here much longer. So plants play a vital role in our survival. All right, so these are two terms that you need to be very familiar with. Okay, reactants are whatever is going into the chemical equation to make it work. The products are what is being released or made from the chemical e uh, equation or reaction. So if we're looking at this, okay, if we're looking at this, whatever is before the arrow... Okay, so here's our arrow. Whoops. Okay, whatever's before our arrow, these are going to be the reactants. This is what goes into photosynthesis. Okay. Um, what comes out are your products. So glucose, C6H12O6 is a product, and O2 is oxygen. 
Okay, so if you're looking, this would be our chemical formula at the top. Okay, and the bottom here, well, these are just the words that they stand for. So if you're not sure what CO2 is, write it down. It is carbon dioxide. H2O is water. Okay, light energy is in the form of sunlight. C6H12O6, which we talked about before, is glucose. And O2 is oxygen. Okay, so you should be familiar with each of those. Okay, you're going to be responsible for this first line up here. Now, what you might notice on this first line is it has these larger numbers next to it. It says 6 CO2, 6 H2O, okay? When you complete chemistry next year, one thing that you're going to have to do is balance an equation, okay? So the larger numbers that are here are for the sole purpose of balancing this equation. So however many Cs are on the left side of the equation, there has to be the same amount of C's on the right side of the equation. Okay, and you'll get into that next year when you talk about chemistry, but that is the purpose of those larger numbers being there. Okay, for the purpose of this course, you need to be able to tell me that there's carbon dioxide and water and light energy that go into making um, photosynthesis, or that go into the process of photosynthesis, and the plants get out glucose, which would be plant food, and oxygen. All right, so when we talk about photosynthesis, the energy is typically stored, okay? So the glucose, which is the energy, is gonna be stored. And it's gonna be broken down through a different process that's called cellular respiration, which is what we're gonna talk about next week. So the process of cellular respiration in humans is gonna be us breathing out carbon dioxide. So we're going to take in, I don't know, a cheeseburger for lunch. Okay, that is our glucose. We're taking in sugars, right? And then we're breaking them down in our body to give us energy. And then we release carbon dioxide that plants take in. Okay, so both autotrophs, and organisms that make their own food, and heterotrophs, organisms that rely on other organisms for their food perform cellular respiration. Cellular respiration is simply the opposite of photosynthesis. That is why we say that these two are called a biochemical pathway. So what does that mean? Okay, well that means that if you're looking here we go. If you're looking at this, try to make it bigger. Okay, the reactants, right, what you put into photosynthesis, biochemical pathway, are the products or what you get out of, okay, cellular respiration. So CO2 is a reactant, what's going into photosynthesis. Water is a reactant, what's going in, and light energy in the form of sunlight, okay? However, for cellular respiration, right, the product, organisms are breathing out carbon dioxide. Organisms get rid of water when they, well, we get rid of water when we urinate right? We get rid of water when we cry and we get rid of water when we sweat, okay? And then what we are making, right? This is the only thing that changes is the type of energy. So in photosynthesis, we are using light energy. However, in cellular respiration, when you eat that cheeseburger, Okay, or maybe you have a pasta dinner before your big football game, right? That's the purpose of giving you energy. And that energy is in the form of ATP. So that's the only thing that changes. And then what you'll notice is that the products, right? Plants get plant food, glucose, and they put oxygen back into the atmosphere. 
become the reactants or what chemical, or excuse me, glucose and oxygen become the reactants or what is needed for cellular respiration to occur. So that cheeseburger you eat is the glucose because you break it down to make sugars and you are breathing in oxygen. Okay, so that is how a biochemical pathway works. The products in blue here, right, this is your product, is the reactant in the second chemical equation and vice versa here. The product in cellular respiration is the reactant or what goes into photosynthesis occurring. Okay. Oh no. Hmm. All right, I guess we're staying like this. What did I do? Where did my pointer go? Alrighty, sorry about that. So next we have the process of photosynthesis that actually occurs. Okay, so the process of photosynthesis basically occurs in two steps. You have the light reactions and then you have the dark reactions or the Calvin cycle. Okay, so there's two steps. So the first set of um, steps we go through are going to be all about the light reactions. You need sunlight in order for these reactions to occur. Okay. Um, so the first set of reactions is called light reactions and the organism, or excuse me, the, not organism, the, um, organelle that does this is called the chloroplast. Okay, so the purpose or the job of the chloroplast is to absorb any sunlight that is taken in. Well, what does the chloroplast look like? The chloroplast is very similar, okay, if you think about it, to the mitochondria. Okay, so in animal cells, the mitochondria provides the energy. However, in plant cells, what provides energy or takes in energy is going to be the chloroplast. Okay, so it also has a double membrane, just like the mitochondria. If you're looking at the chloroplast, okay, inside of it, you would see these little um, flattened sacs. They kind of look like pancakes. They're called thylakoids. If you have a stack of thylakoids together, okay, so like this whole group here, that would be called a granum. Okay, and if you're referring to a bunch of stacks, like the five you see here, one, two, three, four, five, okay, that would be called the grana. Okay, that's just the plural. And then similar to the cytoplasm, right, in a cell, we said the cytoplasm is just the fluid that takes up all the extra space. In the thylakoid, the fluid that takes up all the extra space that's not being used is called the stroma. Okay, so they're very similar when we talk about um, comparisons. Okay, so what happens is the light is absorbed in the chloroplast, okay, and it's absorbed through a pigment called chlorophyll. Okay, so chlorophyll A is what is needed in order for light reactions to occur. And chlorophyll B is basically the helper. Okay, so chlorophyll A has the main job. Chlorophyll B is the helper, okay, which helps or allows um, light reactions to occur. So we have different chloroplasts that are going to play a role um, when chlorophyll A cannot absorb the light. Okay, so you have carotenoids, which are going to be able to absorb orange and red and brown pigments. 
Then you have exanophils, which are going to absorb yellow pigments. Okay, so you'll see variations um, in colors based upon the sunlight absorption. And you're going to look at this later this week in a lab. All right, so these next steps are going to be important for you to understand how photosynthesis works. And it's going to be really confusing at first. Okay, however, in a few minutes, I'm going to show you a picture and we're going to break that picture down to hopefully make more sense to you. So in photosynthesis, you go first through light reactions and light reactions happen in a few different steps. So in order for a light reaction to occur, you need sunlight and water. Okay, you need sunlight and water. The light we already talked about is used for energy. And the energy is going to be used to break down that water molecule, okay, into their atoms by itself. So if you remember, water is H2O, okay, which means that there's two hydrogens and one oxygen molecule. Okay, so we're taking in that energy. That energy breaks down the water into just hydrogens and oxygens. So then what happens to those hydrogens and oxygens? Well, we already know what happens to the oxygen, right? The whole process of photosynthesis is that the oxygen does what? That it goes into the atmosphere for us to breathe. Okay, so that should be pretty self-explanatory. But what happens to these hydrogens? Well, the hydrogen is actually going to be stored, okay, in the plant. They're going to save up all their hydrogens, and we're going to use them a little later as an energy source. Okay, so the, um, the light is being used for energy. The water is broken down into hydrogens and oxygens by themselves. The oxygen goes into the atmosphere. The hydrogen is stored for later. Okay, and we're going to break all of this down in a couple minutes. So then what's the purpose of those hydrogens? Okay, well, during light reactions, the hydrogens are going to be gathered and they're used to make ATP. So we have heard of this term ATP before, and I doubt any of you might remember what it means, but it means adenosine triphosphate. And ATP is just an energy source, okay? So the hydrogens are being stored to make energy, okay? And the process of making that ATP is called chemiosmosis. So then this is the second set of reactions, okay? The second step is the dark reactions or the Calvin cycle. So the first set was the light reactions. The second set is gonna be the dark reactions. So what does that mean? That means that light or sunlight does not need to be present in order for these steps to occur. Okay, so if you think about it all the way back in the beginning, right, we said that this is our chemical equation. And we said that you need carbon dioxide, water, and sunlight in order to make glucose and oxygen. Well, so far in our light reactions, we've used up sunlight and water, right? So in dark reactions, the only thing that is left to use is that carbon dioxide. Okay, so in order for dark reactions or the Calvin cycle to occur, we're going to use um, the carbon dioxide. Okay, so in the Calvin cycle, atoms from carbon dioxide are bonded or fixed, and this is called carbon fixation. Okay, so we take in carbon dioxide, we go through the process of carbon fixation, and our whole goal out of this, okay, is going to be storing energy. 
Okay, so the process of carbon fixation is how plants store energy for later use. So this is gonna happen in three major steps, okay? You have your carbon dioxide that diffuses in the stroma, okay, which we said is basically like the cytoplasm of the cell, or excuse me, of the chloroplast. Okay, we have an enzyme that's going to help build carbon chains. And when we build those carbon chains, we are making glucose, right? So remember, glucose is C6, H12O6, okay? And this is the plant food that is used for later. All right, so if you have so far written absolutely nothing down, this is what I would highly, highly, highly suggest you do, okay? So how does this picture work, okay? The reactants are across the top in the red boxes, right? So in order for photosynthesis to occur, you need light energy or sunlight, you need water, and you need carbon dioxide, okay? So those are the reactants across the top. The products are what is at the bottom, what is made, right? What is made through the process of photosynthesis is oxygen for humans, okay? And sugar, which is also referred to as glucose through the process, or excuse me, as um, glucose, which stands for C6H12O6, Okay, so if you want to remember the chemical equation or the chemical formula, if you're looking at this picture, what you need for photosynthesis to occur is light, water, and carbon dioxide. And what you get out of this process is oxygen and glucose. Okay, so now if you're trying to remember the steps, okay, right? You have to basically take this picture and cut it in half right down the middle here. Okay, cut it in half where you see all these different, where you see the ATP and your phosphate and all these, cut this in half, okay? So if you're just looking at the left side of the screen here, this is a light reaction, right? The sunlight is used to make energy in a light reaction. Water is broken down, hydrogens are stored, oxygen is released, right? Oxygen is released in the atmosphere, and you see that happening here. That's where that O2 comes from, is the breakdown of water, okay? The hydrogens are stored in light reactions, and they're gonna be used in that process of chemiosmosis, okay, to help make ATP. And then if you're, you know, we broke down this side again, right? We said the dark reactions are now gonna happen on the right side. So carbon is the only thing that's needed. We don't need sunlight, right? It's a dark reaction or it's the Calvin cycle, okay? Carbon dioxide goes through dark reactions of the Calvin cycle to go through carbon fixation in which we are going to be making energy for the plant in the form of glucose, right? Which is why you have sugar down here, okay? So it's really important to understand what this diagram can show you. It can break down the steps really easy for you Okay, so you don't have to remember all of those steps, right? Remember, the reactants are at the top, the products are at the bottom. Break the chart in half. You got light reactions on one side and the process of them, and you have dark reactions or the Calvin cycle on the other side, okay? You will see this chart again, okay? So make sure you feel comfortable with being able to explain what happens through this. 
All right, so in the last two things we're gonna talk about is simply the rate of photosynthesis. Okay, and I'll make these very brief. The rate of photosynthesis can depend on several things. It can depend on the amount of light an organism gets, right? And you should know this because if we have a couple days that are cloudy or a couple days where the plant doesn't get um, any water, right, you'll start to see that the plant starts to droop or sag down. Okay, so the rate of photosynthesis is not occurring as much. Okay, temperature can also have an influence on the rate of photosynthesis. So if you're looking and comparing this to almost an exponential um, graph, what you will notice is that the rate of photosynthesis can dramatically increase, okay, due to temperature. Um, however, once it hits a certain temperature, okay, the enzymes that help create this process will actually start to decrease the rate at which it occurs. Okay, so if the temperature gets too hot, it can actually have the opposite effect on a plant's survival. Okay, um, this picture is basically the process of photosynthesis and cellular respiration happening. Um, I'll let you read it yourself. Okay, but remember these two are a biochemical pathway. That one reaction allows for the other reaction to occur. Okay, and the last thing we have on here is the structure of an actual leaf. So if you're looking at an actual leaf, and the main purpose that I, you know, usually show you this picture is because we do a lab. Obviously, you're not going to, unfortunately, be able to do the lab, but this is the, how the inside structure of a leaf works, okay? Um, you have guard cells, which kind of allow things to get in and out of the cell. You have lots of space in the cell, okay, for oxygen to occur. Okay, you have these little green dots, which would be your chloric plasts, and the purpose of them are to absorb that light. And then if you're really looking for some great things to watch, you might like this wrap. Probably not. Oh man, I guess not. <laughs> okay, um, but there's some extra resources on here for you to see. Um, you know, the best thing that I can tell you, all right, maybe there's no longer any resources on here for you to see. Um, but the best thing, if you felt like you were confused and there was a whole lot of information through this, I would highly suggest you get comfortable with explaining this graph or this chart here. Okay? It's a really easy way for you to break down what's happening um, and understand the process without it being so complex. Okay. Um, so if you have any questions, make sure as always you're feeling free to reach out to me. Um, if you felt like this was really, really confusing and like over your head, I can try to provide you with some more things. Um, to help supplement this lecture. And we'll kind of go from there. All right, so you're going to have a review sheet to answer some questions about this. If you feel confused after that, um, I also have a quizzes I can, you know, I can give you guys um, for some extra help. Just let me know what you need. All right, I hope you're well, and hopefully I'll see you on the 18th. Take care, guys.